Now, one of the things I really love about Photoshop is how a technique we use for doing one thing can be used in a totally different picture to do something totally different. So in this video, I want to show you how a technique used to create a light source can also be used to make eyes pop. Now, one of the techniques I used to love showing and still use to this day is something I call the never-ending lighting rig. If you've never seen it, here's a quick reminder. Now, this is such a cool technique because it actually makes it look as though you used more lights during a photo shoot than you really did. And it's incredibly easy to create this effect in Photoshop. All we need to do is to add a blank layer above our image. We'll just rename this one here to Light. Then come over to the toolbar and we're going to get a simple round brush. So I'm going to use the brush tool. In the options bar at the top of the screen, we'll make sure that it's set to 0% hardness. The opacity and flow is set to 100. And in the toolbar, we're using a white foreground color. All I need to do then is just use the right and left square bracket keys to choose the size of the light source that I want, although we can change that in a minute, and then just press down like so. Now at the moment, when we use the Move tool, it doesn't look like a light source. However, what we can do then is come over to the Layers panel and change the Blend Mode for this light layer from Normal to Overlay. Now already you can see that we're starting to get some kind of a lighting effect on our picture just there. Now if that's not bright enough, obviously we can't go brighter than 100% opacity. But what we can do is just duplicate this. So I'm gonna hold down the Command key on Mac, Control key on Windows and press J. When I do that, we see we get a copy of that layer in the layer stack and the actual light now in the picture has brightened. What I'll do to make things easier is put these two layers into a group. So the uppermost layer is highlighted. I'll hold down the Shift key so they're both highlighted, then go to the Fly Out menu in the top right hand corner of the Layers panel and choose New Group from Layers and we'll call this one Light. Then I can just get my Move tool, drag this around to start adding in as many lights as I want to. Now if I want it to be bigger, all I need to do then is just come to the Edit and then Transform and Scale and we can just scale it by holding down the Shift and Option key or Shift and Alt key and dragging out the size of the light source that we want, pressing Enter or Return and then moving it around. And obviously we can duplicate this group to start adding in more lights wherever we want them to be. So that's the never ending lighting rig, but here's how we can adapt it to brighten the eyes, add fake catch lights and really make the eyes stand out. This portrait here of my friend Mac was taken using a largest softbox positioned to the left and forward of him. And this gave a lovely lighting pattern with light on one side and shadow on the other. Now, although nicely lit, the eyes were lacking something. They were lacking punch, they needed more life. So here's what we can do. Now, just like with the never ending lighting rig, I'm gonna first of all start off by adding a new blank layer above our image and I'll just call this one left. And then we'll just zoom in. And the eye I'm going to work on is over the left hand side of the picture just here. But rather than me grabbing a brush, I'm actually gonna choose the elliptical marquee tool from the toolbar. Now, when we first of all grab the elliptical marquee tool, click down and drag, it doesn't stay as a perfect circle. There's actually a couple of ways we can fix it so it does stay as a perfect circle. And the first way is by simply holding down the shift key and you see that it'll snap into place there and then when I drag out or in, it stays as a perfect circle. Now if you don't do that, another way is by coming to the options bar at the top of the screen and where it says style, we've got a choice of fixed ratio or fixed size. I'm gonna choose fixed ratio. And all I'm gonna do now is click and drag I'm holding down no keys, but you'll see that it's staying as a perfect circle. So now if I want to reposition that, all I need to do is hold down the space bar and I can move it around to where I want it to be. And I'd want it to be on the eye, just around about, say, there. Let's just zoom in a little bit more. I'm now gonna drag out another circle, but this time hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows, because this one is now going to take away some of the original selection. So I'll click and drag down to get a circle. I'll hold the space bar down and drag it into place, but I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger so that it overlaps like this and then let go. And you can see now that leaves us with this particular shape. Once we've got that, I'll then go to the edit menu, choose fill, 
and from the contents menu here, which by default will probably say 50% gray, just change that one to white and then click OK. And then we go to select and deselect. Let's just move this across. Now that we've got that in one eye, we'll just hold down the Command key on Mac or Control key on Windows and press J to duplicate it. Let's just rename this layer here now to right. I'll get my move tool and I'll click and drag that over onto the right eye and I can just use my arrow keys on my keyboard just to finely tune the position of it. Now once we have these two in place, the next thing I'm going to do is come over to the Layers panel with the uppermost layer highlighted. I'm going to hold down the Shift key and click on the layer directly below. So both of the eye lights are now highlighted and I'm going to go to the Fly Out menu in the top right hand corner of the Layers panel and choose Convert to Smart Object. In fact, I'll just rename this all now to Eye Lights. Once we've done that, we then go to the Blend Mode and change it just like we did in the Never Ending Lighting Rig. So we come down here to Overlay, and you can see now when I turn that off and on, off and on, we're already adding a little bit of a kick into the eyes there, giving them a little bit more punch. But it's too defined, so we need to blur it out a little bit. So I'll go to the Filter menu, choose Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And I just need to dial in a real small amount, maybe 1.4 on the radius there is just enough, so we can go Before and After, Before and After, and click OK. Now, just as before, with the Never Ending Lighting Rig, if that's not bright enough, we can't go any higher than 100% opacity, so we'll just hold down the Command key on Mac or Control key on Windows and press J to duplicate it, and then we can just lower the opacity of the duplicated one to dial in the exact brightness that we want that catch light to give to the eyes. Now, it can be quite difficult to judge how much to dial that in when the face is really close up, so the best way of doing it is just to back off a little bit so that you can see like that. Now, if I hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows and click just underneath the eye icon of the main image, it'll turn every layer off apart from that one so we can see before and after, before and after. So you can see it really does add a little bit of kick there to the eye to give them just a little bit more life. Now, obviously, we use smart objects because of the flexibility that they give us. We can actually open up the contents of the layer. Here we'll see any filters that we've used and we can double click on those and change the settings in real time. We can also double click on the thumbnail of that smart object to reveal the original contents and then edit them. However, that can be quite difficult when they're presented in a completely new tab, nowhere near the original image. So the way we can get around that, when we have the smart object layer active, we can go to the menu in the top right hand corner of the layers panel and choose convert to layers. It'll then tell us that when we open up the layers here, any filters like the Gaussian blur will no longer be applied, but that's fine, we'll just click OK. Now we see in the layer stack a folder containing the individual shapes that we added onto each eye. So now we could quite easily come in and edit them. So if I wanted to maybe change the shape of the actual light in the right eye here by going to Edit, uh, Transform and Warp, I can then click and change the shape of it like so, commit that in, and then all I would need to do is just convert this to then a smart object and apply that blur. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. So this just makes smart objects incredibly flexible. Now, of course, this isn't a technique that you can use on every portrait because not every portrait is going to need it. But for those portraits where you want to really lift the eyes, this technique is fast, it's easy, and when used correctly, is incredibly realistic. But could I do this in Lightroom? Absolutely. But I'll save that for another video. For now, though, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click on that subscribe button because it's just a great free way that you can support this channel. And it's kind of like giving a virtual thanks. But for now, that's me. I'm done. I'll see you in the next video.